Okay, here's how we play the first part of Don't Stop Believing by Journey. I'm going to assume if you're watching this, you do already know the song. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about the rhythms and stuff. I'm mainly going to tell you where to put your fingers so that you can play it just like it sounds on the record. Okay, let's go. Now, this isn't a piano lesson uh, <laughs> as such, uh, but I am going to start by teaching you the E major scale. Reason for this. We like it when things are in C on the piano because it makes it nice and easy. We just use all the white notes. I played this song in C doesn't really sound the same okay and that's what we're aiming for here so we are going to do it in the original key you can apologize to the singers now the e scale is what is going to have left hand that famous bass line that is what our, is going to be based around this e scale um uh we're just going to deal, deal with this in the simplest way possible the e scale has four black notes in it Okay, so we start from one E, which we'll find next to your group of two back notes right at the bottom. And we're gonna go up to the above, which is in exactly the same space. For most people, that's a nice, comfortable hand, right? Now, here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna play E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B. Start on a white note, two black notes, two white notes. Should start to sound quite familiar. Hopefully, do re mi, um, do a deer, a female deer, all of that stuff, you probably know what this scale is supposed to sound like. So, one, two, three, four, five. And then to play the rest, and this is how we're gonna use this scale in the piece, we're gonna put your third finger over the top and pick up two more black notes. And that will take you all the way up to the top. And that is our classic E major scale fingering, puts us on the thumb when we're finished keeps everything nice and neat. So first thing you want to do is get really comfortable with that. And that's pretty much it for theory, I promise. Now, how are we going to manipulate that scale into that really famous journey bass line? Okay, one step at a time. Starting right there on the E. We're going to walk up two, skip one, thumb. Oops. Right. That's our first bit. Now we're going to use the rest of the scale and we're going to put our third finger over but we've got a, like a little a little turnaround, a little dance we do up here. Third finger over. So let's put that together. Third finger over, little turn. Then we're going to complete the scale. And our pinky should be right there where we need it for the A. Biggest jump that we're going to do. Now, depending on how familiar you are with music already, um, if you're not that familiar with music, you can still hear which direction those notes are traveling in when you're trying to find them. So start there. Are we going up? Yes. And then we're going back down again. Then. Yeah, and try and just start to get your bearings in whichever terms feel comfortable to you about which direction you're traveling on the keyboard. I wouldn't move on until you can pretty much play this in your sleep. Okay, so now that's our left hand pretty much sorted. Our right hand, again, we're gonna work um, with three positions at first. Um, not too difficult to switch between, especially the first two. I want you to think again about this big, nice octave that we can usually fit with just one hand here. Um, we are gonna start with two Bs. Nice octave there, right? And these fingers are gonna stay an octave apart the whole time. So we're going to start with a B, an E, and another B. And that is our first four beats. One, two, three, four. Now all we're going to do is walk, uh, or step really, our middle note up to there. So I would do it just like this. One, first finger, second finger, pinky, up to first finger, third finger, pinky. 
Um, again, another thing to bear in mind if we're wondering why why we're not going there, because we're still sticking to the notes that are in that scale. Okay. Um, so there's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then back down to where we started. No problems there. Now this one's slightly more difficult to remember at first. Walk down one but to our A's. Then we're actually going to jump this all the way down to a C sharp. And then it gives us more of a traditional kind of chord. So you've got position one, position two, position one again, position three. Okay, and again, I'd become pretty confident with those before you move on. Four of each. Okay, so to put these together, uh, we have a little difficulty in the right hand and the left hand coordinating together, as the left hand has what we call a push. And we like it in music when things start on one, uh, or finish on one, uh, because it makes it easier to count. However, this one, it's all like one, two, three, four, boom, two, three, four, boom, two, three, one, two, three, right? So our left hand is always going to arrive at the change slightly before our right hand, which can be a little difficult at first. But once you get it, you'll realise it's it's kind of key. Uh, so. There's your first change. So think about that. And we're not going to break this down too much rhythm-wise, but if we can count like one and two and three and four, one two three and four and change two three and that little rhythm one two three and four and one two three is going to get us through all of the changes here one two three and four and one two three and four and one back to position one So this is why it's so important to be really secure with both hands before we start trying to put this rhythm together. Uh, let's try that one more time. Two, three, and four, and one. Two, three, and four, and one. Two, three, and four, and one. Oh, there it is. Two, three, four. Okay, the last thing for this introduction is um, I think this works fine. Sounds quite a lot like Don't Stop Believing. Uh, but if we want to be perfect, which we do, uh, actually is what is going on, okay? Now this is just a rhythmic change. It doesn't affect what notes you're gonna play with your right hand, just affects which order you're gonna play them in. What we're gonna do is break that right hand into a top two notes and a bottom one note. So that way we can make a more complex rhythm by instead of going one, two, three, four, like we were before, we're going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now, I guess actually means these two fingers are doing the same as they were before. It's just this one is now in between each beat rather than on it. So first off, let's get used to this. Same as we're doing before, just That's the really tricky part. We're going to put those together. Still got those changes happening slightly after each other. One and two and three and four and change. And two and three and four and change. Three and four and change. the end. 
right? So um, <clears throat> a couple of things you can think about when you're playing this. Uh, yes, bear in mind that that hand is not changing. Uh, now this is a, it's a complex rhythm. We've got something on every single eighth note of that measure, one and two and three and four and, but nothing happens like in between those eighth notes. So if you start getting like, then something's gone awry, right? Everything should still feel, whilst it's um, interlocking rhythmically, it should still feel like it's in, you know, it's locked into the same beat. So if things start to get too complicated, you might have put a foot awry and just dial it back one level and give it another go. Um, and that, I think, should see us through. Um, have fun. <laughs>